Hello, Oasis. What up? Yes. Hey, we are back. Another episode here in the podcast mm-hmm. studio. It's been good. Yeah. Has it? Emily's thinking about <laughs> bringing some change into this space. Like what? What would you do? Not make it look like a dentist office. No. Yeah. I think, I don't know, maybe painting the back wall, making it more tan and warm and inviting. It just feels very cold in here. Yeah. yeah. Maybe get some just like cool decorations. Yeah, you just got to get that approved. A real, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe a real plant. Oh, that's no, that's real. Then someone's gotta I water care. that. Wait, it is real? No. <laughs> Who's going to take care of it? I will. You're going to water it once a week? You better get the right plant. There's I'm definitely serious, no, man. there's zero windows in this space. Yeah, so. which is what some plants can exist in this environment. I don't get that. How does a plant exist know, without zero I, sunlight? It's indirect from the from this kind of light. That counts? D- yeah, even some that like, apparently. Do you believe that? I don't no. know. I bet I you can find a plant that would exist in okay, this environment. Okay, okay. I'm not not believing you. I'm just, That's I That's weird questions. to think about. It. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame mm-hmm. him. My brother's a pastor and he lives in the parsonage. So he lives in like the church parking lot and he has a snake plant and he has to record videos sometimes. So whenever he has to record a video, he brings this giant snake plant with him for work and then he sets it up in his little studio and then there like records go. it and it's in the background. And then when he's done, he takes it back to his <laughs> house. What is a snake plant? It's like, um, it's kind of like a cactus, but it's the plants that are just like, look like really long pieces of grass. Snake plant. He's looking up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not what <laughs> I pictured in like, my head, but some type I like of succulent, it. succulent, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like it. I see it. Mm-hmm. You can get one for just $18 on Amazon. I'll just fill this whole Somewhere. room with snake plants. Well, we got off weird. You do you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be work. <laughs> Yeah, that speaking, would be work. Well, speaking of work, speaking of what we work, if you could work anywhere besides here at Grace Point, where would you work? If I could work anywhere, like like what would be the dream? I'm living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> my life is the dream. It's my dream. It's God's I'm, dream I'm living for God's me. dream for me. Got me there. You beat me there to it. Good job, sir. Do you have one? Do you know? I mean, if I had the skills for this, which I obviously don't. I think I'd like to be like a really, I w- I'd like to work for like an art studio mm. as like an artist, which I'm not. <laughs> like what kind of artist are you going to paint? Like, like, yeah, to paint. Okay. But Brennan saw my painting skills last night and it was not good. <laughs> not great. <laughs> not great. I knew what it was. Yeah. But it was a stretch. Yeah. 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 That's hilarious. Do you know what you'd do? Yeah. I'd be a coach somewhere. Or what? It doesn't matter. Anything? Pick something. Life coach? No. Ah. No. <laughs> Not at all. No. I watched a podcast with a life coach the other day, and yeah. I didn't ever know what they did, but now yeah. I do. Seems like a helpful gig. You can a life help. coach? Yeah. You can oh, yeah. Help for sure. People. I think it does help people. Okay. I think Serenity is like a certified life coach. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Some sort of coach in some sort of sport. See, and mine was sports too, but with, I don't want with college. I don't want to be Not the young, coach. Young the kids. coach, Kate, they get way too much backlash, man. Mm, like, if your team's good, they love you. If your team's middle of the road or worse, like coaching is a hard gig. A yeah. lot of critics, a lot of people with opinions. I want to be in a, a professional sports environment, but like behind the scenes, like a strategist, like an analytics guy, okay. yeah. like uh assistant to an assistant coach you know someone who nobody knows my name but i'm a part of like the culture of sports i get to show up at practice i get to hang out with the athletes i get to have some role in us being a team like competing like that but none of the pressure (laughs) like they're if they were gonna fire me they'd have to fire 14 other people before (laughs) they could fire me just because i'm so far down on the totem pole that's what i want that's how it happened would this be for texas I mean, that would be great. Yeah, that's, that's that'd be that great. is yeah. the, the idea. But I don't mind, like, I'd do it for the Vikes. I'm not even a Vikes fan, really. Oh, yeah. But I'd do it because that'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Just yep. any, it doesn't really matter. Just a sports org. Yeah. Preferably not someone who's really, really bad. There's a position on the Vikes where he, there's a guy who has access to the head coach during the game. I don't know what the title is, but what he's like, ultimately like the, back? no, oh, like up, up in a booth. Okay. And he is the one who has the analytics of what is the percentage wise mm-hmm. next mm-hmm. step, but also has the freedom to know situation and circumstance to give best advice to coach. Mm. It's it's game strategist. I would love that. I would love Feels that. like a very fireable job. Oh, I'm for sure. And I, I, <laughs> I feel like I thrive in it. If that was 100% AI and I was just saying it into the, the microphone, if then I'm in. Nothing is ever 100% AI. If AI can do my job, but I can do the job that AI did for <laughs> if me. If I get paid for the job that AI does for me. Sign me up. <laughs> 
Sign me up. <laughs> Speaking of work. So yeah, we're talking about work. Uh, so we're like middle of October at this point. We're in the grind. Like, <sighs> been whether, grinding. Yeah, whether you're in classes, whether you're just you know at your job, like middle of the fall is when things start to feel heavy. My like, grind hasn't stopped for 15 years. Dang. Your, your grind? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, just grinding. All right. <laughs> but yeah, mid-October can be tough. Yeah. Starting it's to tough. get cold, starting to get dark. The the thrill of the start of the school year and start of things yeah. has yeah. dipped, and yet you're not close to the finish. No. And it's like every day you wake up, you get less and less time, Like, mm-hmm. and it's just like the looming, like, I'm about to lose the fall. And it's, as, it's here. as Christians, we don't celebrate Halloween, and so, of course, there's no holiday in October. You're going to have to unpack that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can go back to episode, like, 16 of the original of the original <laughs> podcast and we did should you celebrate halloween we should probably go back to some of those and actually like is this right did we what no, we say it's, right i'm sure it's fine it's <laughs> fine it's fine I've, I've been i've grown okay but yeah but anyways like i think we could take this opportunity to talk about like we need to rest and take care of ourselves but actually today i wanted to flip the narrative and say how do we actually work well because when we look at how god designed us god didn't just create us to be a reflection that's part of who we are, but we're to extend that reflection. And part of what God did is that he actually created us to work. Mm-hmm. When Adam was Adam and Eve were in the garden, before sin happened, they actually had a job, which is weird to think about because a lot of times we think of work as something unenjoyable, as something that takes away our freedom. But work was actually a gift that God gave us and a purpose he planted in us to extend his image to the entire world. Yeah, that's, that's good. Great. And so if we kind of look at this design for work, um, what does it actually look like? to work well. Yeah. Part of it is in the image of God, we reflect God's character and we reflect some of God's um, responsibility to say. So God created the earth and then he handed us responsibility when he talks in Genesis 1 26. He says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, over all creatures that move along the ground. And God is the ultimate ruler. He is the supreme authority, yet he bestows some of that authority onto us as the stewards of his creation to have leadership, to cultivate, to make order, to to continue in his creation of the world and his uh, ruling process. Yeah, that's good. And, and like he's planted that inside of all of us, no matter what we do. And I think no matter if like you are employed or unemployed, whether your work is like doing homework or your work is like being an athlete or your work is staying at home and taking care of people, all of that is a vessel in which God uses like to reveal his glory. And all of that is something where we get to participate in what God is doing. Yeah, because Adam's call was to the land that was in front of him. And just because you're not a farmer out in the middle of nowhere doesn't mean you Mm -hmm. don't get to live in the same kind of call that Adam got. Yours might be to a computer screen in a tech office where you're an accountant. Yours might be to a customer across the counter from you. Like Your call is still work from God bestowed on you in order to bring about fruitfulness of creation. It just will look a, yeah. maybe a little bit different. And I like that. I, that the, the language of fruitfulness of creation, mm-hmm. which is bestowed from a sense of purpose from God and how he created us. Yeah. It's this designed for intentional activity, Absolutely. not just random activity. Yeah. yeah. That's good. yeah we're all supposed to be creating some kind yes. of goodness in yeah. the world. And atoms look like trees and yeah. plants and, and pre-fall it was in partnership with God. Yeah. What That's happened okay. in the fall was Adam and Eve decided to go out alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, okay, let's keep following that. So after the fall, our work kind of looked a bit different. What are some of the shifts that we saw? Yeah, you can see in the fall narrative, Genesis 3, God brings a curse upon those involved in the call, in the fall. And so he he speaks to the serpent and he speaks to man. He says, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat, bring fruit from the ground. And so what Adam used to do in joy, what he used to do out of an overflow of his relationship with God, will now come at a, a cost to him. It will come out of the sweat of his brow, out of strife and energy and, and grind in a lot yeah. of senses. Like that's where the difficulty of work is introduced. And God has said, this is part of the the result of the the action you just took. Like it's not, didn't come out accidentally. It's not like we accidentally took a wrong turn and we ended up at this place. Like, no, Adam entered, sin entered the world through Adam. And because of that, God said, this is part of the consequence yeah. is that your work Mondays are hard now mm. because of sin. Yeah. Like some of that is like you struggle through afternoons at work because sin is in the world. Like that wouldn't exist if we were living in the perfection of God's kingdom, yeah. work would be a blessing. Yeah. But there are moments where it is really, really, really hard 
And that's part of the fall. Yeah. Yeah. And I think going back to even pre-fall, it's in partnership with God in which we find our purpose and where intentional activity comes from. After the fall, we struggle with finding our purpose because we're looking outside of God of what should I do in work and in activity. And so I'm continually searching for like, am I doing the right thing? Am I living in my purpose? Like those conversations and questions is the work I'm doing right. Where in whatever your job is or work you're doing, it's how are you being asked to partner with God in it? The fall says, do it alone by yourself. Go at it by yourself. Try to figure it out on your own. It's like, no, that wasn't the original intention. But it also like says like, will this fill me? Yeah, it's it's looking at, so it's not only just saying like what around me tells me what to do, but it says, okay, so how can I use work now to fill myself? So how can my work now give me the financial benefits, like the professional benefits, even just like a bunch of possessions or like affording like a really, really nice house, like being at the top of the food chain. How can that then like fill me rather than like allowing like my relationship with God, like to form my identity? Yeah. yeah it becomes, there's a void in us that needs to get filled rather than we have something in our work becomes an overflow. Which is what's, it still goes back to the Genesis 1 thing too. It's like the idea of image of God, Mm -hmm. the Greek word there gives this idea of impression, right? The handprint, right? It's, think of a memory foam mattress. You put your hand on it and you'd see the imprint. Like God in creating us in his image gave us this imprint, this handprint within us that only he could fill. The fall took that away and allows, tried to force us to fill that imprint that only which he could with other things. So our work has become our achievement to Mm -hmm. identity, success, whatever. Yeah, this is an aggressive statement, but in some ways, <laughs> maybe I wouldn't even say in some ways, the fall made us less human. Yeah, for sure. And you see that in so many ways show up today, just the dehumanization of people in the way that we interact with each other, in the way that we view each other, in the way that we're, we experience each other, in the way that we value each other. Like there is just a, a colossal communal dehumanization of people yeah. it's the way you interact with your neighbor to the the clerk at the grocery store to the internet and social media like we're constantly being dehumanized and that's part of satan's ploy yeah. but even some of work and the way that we now treat work is dehumanizing i love the john mark comer where it's a quote where it says underwork or overwork rob us of the capacity to enjoy god in his world they make us less yeah. human like in some ways this brokenness of of sin in our work turns us into machines. Like Emily, you wrote you it, that can't turn off. And so we are prone to try to fill that void yeah. and we become another cog in the system in or in the organization we're a part of. And we lose some of our own humanness of what does it mean to be created in that image? And what does it mean to be alive? Yeah, that's good. You're not created to be the energizer buddy. And yeah. like, I think too, even just culturally, like that's what we define as success. Like the more productive and the more busy you are, the more you seem valued because it seems like you have more to contribute. Like Mm. this sense that you're just like always the bunny that's banging the drum. But in reality, like your soul is actually dying in that process. Mm. Your soul is being drained. Your soul is being filled. And that is what makes you human. Mm. It's not like, I don't know what makes you human. Isn't just like the fact that you get to work, but it's the fact that your soul is pouring out into what you do and your soul can Mm. pour out what God has been pouring into you. Yeah. That's good. A couple of weeks ago, you preached on identity. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that has been interesting for me in my own life is to look at what are the false identities that I'm wrestling with and that I believe about myself, what, what's been sewn into me as lie. What, like, isn't it over an over exaggeration to say, I am what I do is one of the premier, if not the premier identity lie we believe. Premier is the like, is it like, yeah, man, I know it's up there. Yep. For sure. But like, if we were to survey number one, if we were to survey, maybe it's, maybe it's especially just with college students and young adults who are so into, but I think this lie of, I am what I do, Mm -hmm. the work that I produce, the achievement I, I grasp. Yeah. That is who I am. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think that is the premier lie we find our identity in. I think so, too. I don't think you're wrong. Yep. And some of that, I think, ties into this conversation. Yeah. And it's the brokenness of work of, where of, we were given this identity as a child of God yeah. in the image of God. Yeah. When that is void, what do we look to fill it with? We look to, to fill it with the task God gave us because that's still what we can grasp. We, we can't always grasp or understand in our sinfulness the image of God, but we still know work yeah, and we only know a corrupted version of work. And so we're trying so bad and everybody everywhere is trying so bad 
to fill that void. And yep. I think so much of it is this sense of how much can I work and what can I produce to make me feel valuable, yeah. worth it, yep. fulfilled, yeah. whole. And so responsibility is never going to leave us. Mm. Like we're always going to have something that we're working, like whether it's a job, whether it is for like caring for other people, there's always a sense in which we do have this responsibility to work. So what does it look like to kind of redefine this narrative and step into the design of how God has actually created us to work? Yeah, I think it's embrace the reality that work is a part of the human existence and experience as like who we are as, as, as human beings, but recognize that as you were, yes, created to work, you also were created to work from rest, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we go to the Genesis account, we see the first full day, like God creates all of creation six day creates humans and then the very next day god rests not because god needed to rest but he wanted humanity's first experience of a full day to be one of enjoying his goodness and presence and rest and so i think just how do you embrace the gift of sabbath and what it looks like to understand and know that our work comes from our rest i think the the classic uh we're human human beings not human doings <laughs> i think there's a super cheese but really real like how do i allow work to flow from resting in the goodness of god it re it help as i rest in the presence of god i can reorient one uh a redefining of work being a form of worship and not a form of achievement where i find my identity and purpose to i can allow my work to continue to be surrendered unto the purposes of god in partnership with him not going about it by myself but then it also pushes back where sin told us or whether trying to find our identity or I can't remember how you phrased it. It's the JMC quote. Mm-hmm. Uh, we turn ourselves into machines because of work. Rest goes against Sabbath goes against that yeah. idea and system yeah. against the reality of having to overwork and becoming a machine. It literally is combating that I have to always be doing something. For sure. So start with embracing Sabbath. I think, yeah. Sabbath is an act of defiance, which is a really, really that's strong phrase. That's good. No, that's, um, yeah. But like when you see like when the Israelites leave Egypt, one of the things that God institutes and commands them to do is to like keep the Sabbath day holy by not working. Mm -hmm. And part of it was saying like you were treated like a machine in Egypt, like through slavery, you were never allowed to rest. And like that's how you understand the world of never being able to stop. And your act of defiance, like part of how I'm going to psychologically and emotionally get Egypt out of your brain is by commanding you to rest. And so I think Sabbath, like because it is an act of defiance, it's like it's a practice that you have to hone. It's a skill you have to hone over time. Like there will be distractions. There will be things that make you not want to practice it, but there is such a beauty and a gift of what starts to happen in your life. Like the other six days of the week, when you work out of a 24 hour period of rest, rather than like a 24 hour period of toil and like exhaustion. And I love this section of the conversation because I think these two ideas have to be linked together. Uh-huh. You have to. You can't separate them. That I think yeah. if you begin to have a dialogue around work, but you never talk about Sabbath, you yep. hold one way too tight in tension. Yep. And if you have a conversation about Sabbath, but you never talk about work, you lean too far in the other direction. Like the two are meant to function together, that we have been created as people to live in this tension of rest and work. And Sabbath is such a key part of that rest and work and the conversation we have is such a key part of that work. And so to have these two volley back and forth and say, what does it mean to work? And dialogue, but also, what does it mean to Sabbath? And they're they're two sides to the same coin and they have to be a part of the same conversation. Super good. I think one of the beautiful things about Sabbath, too, um, there's a Jewish rabbi named Abraham Heschel. I think that's his name. <laughs> I've never pronounced the name right in my life. So, yeah, same. But he like wrote this book about the Sabbath like in the 1950s um, after World War II. And he talked about how Sabbath was just this palace and time of like getting to enter God's delight and God's presence and of just like. Sometimes in my, like, in, throughout my week, I just think of, like, man, like, I just crave being in this, like, sacred space and the sacred time period of being, like, with God, like, in his presence. But it's also, like, the hope, too, of looking forward of, like, it's this taste of eternity. Like, God has set that in our hearts, and Sabbath is participating and getting this future glimpse of what eternity mm-hmm. is like. Yeah. Another piece of the conversation of how do we bring about redemption in our work, then, is talking about working from our calling. And calling is this christianese word in a lot of sense but i think it 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 does a good job of putting weight back into what we do 
that wherever you're at and whatever you're working in, are you rooted in a sense of call that God has you there for a strategic purpose, for a purpose for his kingdom, for his mission? And if you can find that sense of calling, whether you're a teacher or a pastor or an accountant or a businessman or a student, yeah. uh, if you have a sense of calling that I'm not just here because I signed up to be, I'm not just here because I need a paycheck, I'm not just here because like this is the only job I could get. But I'm here because the God of all the universe has placed me here for such a time as this to be invested in these people to do yeah. this work. When you can root yourself in that sense of calling, it changes the way you show up on Monday. And it changes how you do weekday afternoons. And it changes how you handle that like task you didn't want. And it changes yes. how you navigate that relationship with a coworker that frustrates you. And so many of the things that make us bitter at work can become so much better if we can just understand God's call of for us in that place. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It even changes. Yeah. So many, so much of what you said is just so great. And a part of helping get that out of being rooted in the calling is how do you recognize it's self-awareness? Yeah. How do you recognize the giftings and passions and things in which God has placed in you mm -hmm. to then just add as an overflow of that. So like I worked at Taco John's as I was, yeah. as I knew as yeah, I called yeah, yeah, into ministry yeah. and there was an aspect of like, I'm, a, I'm an extroverted person who loves to have conversation, who, especially in that season of life, just wants to be a, like a, whoever I'm around and whatever environment I'm in, whether it's here at the church serving seventh grade boys who won't listen yeah. or making Olay's over Taco Woo! Tuesday, yeah. lunch hour, yeah. like in anyone I'm around, what does it look like to be a gentle, like kind, joyful presence mm -hmm. in person in the midst of that? Just because that's who, especially as a new person in Christ, like I knew that's who I was. Yeah. So it's like, all right. So even when Olay, making Olay's was tough, mm -hmm. like, man, but this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. One, I'm around people who, one, need Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's allowed me to work in a space where, like, I can actually, like, be the presence of God in the midst of just uh, somewhere outside the church, which is really beautiful. So I just embrace that reality. And in that, it's like, in my kindness and being joyful and, like, wanting to have fun and be goofy, it's like, I, I, I even when work was really hard and it was tough to go in that day, it's like... I could use that which God has given me and gifted me and how he's created me to be a part of how I just went about making the beans that we needed to make that day. <laughs> and I, I've got, I've got a bunch of thoughts off of that, but one that I think about, and this is, if this could become my catchphrase, this would be awesome. Be like, don't waste the Olays. Don't waste the Olays. <laughs> like Ever. one taco Johns, please <laughs> do not waste the Olays. Waste we the Olays. will find people to consume them. I will eat them. But also when you're making the Olays, yeah. when you're in that season, don't waste what God has for you there. Because calling is progressive, yeah. and what he's doing in your life now is setting you up for what he wants to call you for to sure. next. Yeah. And so the way that you stewarded your job at Taco John's affects the way you pastor now. Yep. And the way you pastor now will affect the way you pastor yes, in a decade. For sure. And so right now you're a student, and you're like, well, it doesn't really matter if I show up to oh, class. Oh, that's super good. You know, it doesn't. Super good. It doesn't. But yep. it does. The yep. way you show up to class now will impact the job you have in 10 years yeah. and the way that you show up for your job and the way that you show up for your job right now, even though it's not what you want to be in for your career and it's not your dream job. Like the way you show up now, don't waste that. Yeah. Like show up to that calling the way you would want to show up to the dream job, the way that you would want to show up to your career, the way that you want to show up to, to the rest of what God has for you in your life. Yeah, don't waste good. the Olays. Don't waste the Olays, man. I'm, I'm going to get that. Tattooed? I'm going to get a sticker of that. No, not <laughs> tattoo. That's not tattoo level. <laughs> oh. I think Just anything, like a giant thigh tattoo anything, where it says don't waste. Anything TJ's related is tattoo. Level. <laughs> don't waste the lace. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> but I think too, part of calling is knowing what you're not supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and being obedient to that. And, I think I really wrestle with the life of Jesus and just seeing the people and the places he said no to yeah. because he had a focus on his calling. He knew where he needed to go. He knew the people he needed to see. And he knew that like, yeah, he knew what he had to do. And so he was willing to say no to people. There were yeah. people that were not healed and were not touched by Jesus because Jesus's mission was greater. And they received healing through Jesus when he continued on the journey he was supposed to be going through to the cross. Yeah. And so just like staying focused and like we say here a lot, like keeping your calling current. And part of that for me has been saying, okay, what's not my calling? Yeah. What should I not what be I mean? investing yeah. in right now? So that way I can stay focused in what my calling is right now. Good work isn't saying yes to everything. It's knowing what to say yes to. Yeah. 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 Just, that's good. Yeah. But then how would you say, like, there is a sense of when God, like, gives us a calling and we start working. Like, we want to give something, like, of excellence to God. Like, that is a form of worship. How do we navigate excellence versus, like, the perfectionism in all of it? I, I, I love defining excellence as doing the best I can with what I have and what I can mm -hmm. control. Like, 
So if I approach, I heard you say that. Oh, I said it at our last all staff. But it's just, but it's that. So it's like when I'm in my role and in my job, like we'll go past because that's what we are. Yeah. When I'm writing a sermon, okay, there is just a set amount of capacity and time that I have, yeah. right? There's other aspects of my job I need to do that has just have been laid out before me. So with what I can control to the best of my ability, I'm going to work the best that I can. Mm, like, good. and that for me has, over, because that also then allows me to surrender when things might not go right or don't feel right. It allows me to surrender like, okay, then th there's just things outside of my control that awesome. Yeah. God, you're still in this. Mm -hmm. When I was a worship pastor, I'll tell you what. There was things that for some reason would happen on Sunday morning that never happened on Thursday night practice. Yeah, oh yeah, but, tech issues, man. Uh, but but to the best of my ability, yeah. to the with what I could control, with the time that I had, I worked mm -hmm. and I pursued and I was faithful and I jumped into it and I made sure I was prepared. Mm -hmm. And then if things went crazy Sunday morning, I was prepared. Yeah, I could surrender it and let it go. Doesn't let me frustrate me. So like, uh, yeah, it's just working to the best of my ability with the time that I have to the best of my, or uh, to with what I can control. It's like, I just knowing it, phrasing it that way for me has been really good mm -hmm. because then it's, I'm what I'm doing is I'm just being, being really faithful to what God's called me to in different levels. That's good. Do you remember him saying this? No. Oh, okay. I'm off the hook. I'm <laughs> off the hook. I'm off the hook. <laughs> Maybe we're both in trouble. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> as long as I'm not alone. As long as, no, but that's, I mean, that's great. Like I think Colossians 3.23 like whatever yeah, you do, whatever. work at it with all your heart. Yep. Work at it with all your heart yes. as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Yeah. And that's just, it's whatever you do, like what is excellence, just do it with everything that God has given you. Yeah. Give your best of your ability. And I need that word over my own life all of the time because mm. it is so easy to show up and not give your best to give just what you feel like is adequate for that situation. Yeah. Like in college, I think of all the group projects I showed up and just gave what I felt like I, I, I could get by mm, with. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I just gave the group enough where I felt like I, I contributed and could get out of the group project. But it's like, no, no, no. That's that, that's that mentality that short, that, that cuts short what God wants to do in that situation. And every, yeah. What would it look like to show up to every situation, mm. whatever you do, whatever work, home, job, school, chores and work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Yeah. Not for human masters. Good. Yeah. That would be pretty excellent. I think you do a lot of really good work. Agreed. Well, I think that kind of wraps us up for today, mm. but as you guys continue to work this week, just keep working for it. Like with, every, with all that you got and yeah. then come Sunday night and rest and, and be filled with the God of living hope and be sent back out into the week to keep working. And put every song you know that has the word work in it in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Peace.